Hard to believe how cold it can be in an English summer dawn, clear sky. It's just ten past four in the morning. I'm going to get the old brew on. Ah, dear. The things we do for fishing. It's just getting light. Just getting light and having a cup of tea before I start. I'm trying to warm up a bit. I've got my headgear on. <laughs> it's the end of June. <laughs> it's really damp and cold. It's going to be a fabulous day, I think. Don't see any clouds. Hoping that full moon's gone. And I, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, I can show you guys a tench or two. Or even carp, perch, roach, who knows. I'm just into the fishing. Let's make sure this cattle's going. I am undoubtedly the first one on the water. Look at the feeder stream there, trickling away. It's a low light camera so it shows up really well. What a setting. Mist coming off the water. Always going to be dew on the grass so my feet are going to get soaked. Ooh. Is that a duck or is that a fish moving? And I'm going to try and catch something before I go to the other lake. I'm going to come down here. There's only about 10 pegs, 11 pegs on this water. But it's a sort of fun place. I'm going to go under this willow tree. I've fished here before and done okay. I'll try it under here and just down there. I reckon 4.30 to quarter five till about 7.30. Generally I find tench fishing traditionally in small lakes, not deep gravel pits, is done by about 7.30 or as soon as the light hits the water. And here the sun will probably come up over there first and this might be the last place it comes to. I need to get some bait in the water. Birds are starting to wake up as well. Not as many birds out this morning and the dawn calls as I thought there might be unless they're late starting. You just see a little finger of red coming up there in dawn. Even here I can hear traffic and I'm in the Somerset countryside. Must be the M5 or something. Oh, that's better. I'm going to be using this stuff. Margin mix, it's called margin mix. But I'm always fishing in the margins, you know me. So we'll give it a go. Got to get some bait in the water. Just about light enough to float fish. We're going to put a blink ledger out as well and dry worms. I've always found worms and tench go together at dawn. The bit I don't like is the at dawn.
I always like to uh, get some floating crust out there. Now I find, this is my personal experience, I find floating crust better in the evenings. But it's dawn, I've got to give it a go because the wind's down. And I've only got basically, say, five till about eight good fishing time. Get a bit of ground bait out there. I tend to give it a bit of a pasting ground bait. To start with. And the water is really warm. Well, nothing much on the surface moving. I see no clouds, it's going to be a hot one at the other, other fish we have got to go. I'm chucking the bread under there. Some of the bread's gone, but I don't actually see what's taking it. All right, so I've got, I've got an Avon rod, which I'm going to be fishing. Ah, probably there's a link ledger on the bottom, I think. And I've got a 13 foot match rod. I've got a plumber depth and get a small hook put on there for tench. First job, plumb the depth. Waggler float guys, uh, usual waggler. You can see that antenna float. So it's a delicate presentation, not too delicate, but you can leave quite a bit sticking up and still see the bite. I'm gonna plumb the depth first. Well, bait is nothing more or less than a tasty couple of dendrobina worms on there as you can see i haven't got the link ledger set up yet but there's an owl out here it's still out there nothing much i saw one sort of swirl around one of the bits of crust Nothing on the inside here, so let's get this link ledger put up on this one because I've got a feeling the link ledger might be the way. Well, would be, except I can't see me float now. There's fish taking off the surface and knocking the crust. Oh, I see that float. What the hell have I done with that float? Why can't I see it? You've got to allow for the weight of the worms as well when you shot in a float up. Now I see it. Right, we get this link ledger rigged up and drop it just in here. Got a mouth for the shot, guys. I've just, just had the rod go round. Let's put that down. I'm still rigging up the I thought, why is that rod going over there? Well, I have indeed got a fish hooked up and I didn't even see the bite it is. Ah, oh, it's a tench. Here he comes. Mr. I didn't think it'd be too long. It's worth getting out of bed, isn't it? It's worth getting out of bed for this species. Look at that. Worm, tench, not a big fish, we know, but that's what I've come for. Well, I've got some of this green ground bait and pellets left over. Certainly not going mad this morning. So let's see if I can get some right around the float. Maybe they're late starters like me. I was a late starter at school. I didn't get my O levels till I was 54. <laughs> I only finished the first mass homework by the time of 29. All the other kids are 14. Gotta laugh, haven't you? You'd cry otherwise. Come on, another tench or a carp. Maybe I'll chuck a bit more bread out. It's been one fish moving, just picking the odd piece off. They're not going nuts. They are not. It's like, like a big, full on commercial, starving type water. <clears throat> it's a sort of natural lake. As you can see, it's a natural lake. Very small, ideal little float fishing place. Bit like we used to fish as kids, going back to basics. 
the fish, the, when they're on the top, there's some big fish in here. It's, they, they can be quite picky. Don't have a huge number of worms. Certainly enough for I don't have any worms, but what's, what's happened to them? I think they've all escaped. The lid was slightly raised. I think they've all escaped. All over my car roof. Oh. One. Have they gone down the bottom? No. There's a few in this tub. There's a few there. Many. I might use sections of uh, of lobworms as well. They're all looking a bit tired and a bit sad for themselves. It looks sadder when they're looking the water, don't they? I suppose. Here we go, here we go, go, go. Missed him. Oh, happy days. That's what you get when you're filming. Scenics. See what I find interesting. I'm just zoomed in here on lily beds on the other side. Now you think there's no flowers there, and in fact they're all there, but they're closed up. Now I'm only going to be here three hours, but I'm going to say some of those are going to be opening up, literally as the sun comes on them. So I'll give it to about 7:30 when I sort of think it's all over. Whoa. Hang on a minute. Oh. I'm on. Oh, what? What? Hang on a minute. I can't put this camera in my mouth. It's too big. Feels like a small tent. It is indeed. Well, bit of a cl bit of a cluster, but uh, there we go. Small tent. And that one, and that is the setting and the picture that we all want to see. A tench and the dawn, same time. I mean, is that not a pretty picture? Well, not a tench this time, guys. But a nice rud. Here we go. Uh, 
Let's get him back. That's on a big piece of lobworm. All right, I've loaded up on a bed of fish on a float. There's no way this one is a tench. I just threw some ground bait. It went absolutely luckily right on top of the float. It must have just tumbled down over there and he followed it down and found the worm. Oh dear, don't go in there please. I'm guessing a carp. What a setting, eh? I always say that with this little lake. Oh, no, 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 no. Amazing how they know where these snags are under here. Look, 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 look. Small carp. Well, what fun on a match rod. As the saying goes, oh, I'm totally awesome, it's worth getting out of bed for. Come on, buddy. <clears throat> they are good little scrappers here, I will say. Small common. Nothing else on the inside there. He's in. Let's have a look at him. Worms out, got me worm back, brilliant. Small common carp, two tench and a perch. Nothing on the bread, I'm su really, really surprised. Hello? Really surprised on that. I just see the tip tweak in there. Still there, I can see the line shaking. Dare I move it? Float again. I don't know what this one is. Another tench. Be nice when they they get to like about four pounds in here. <clears throat> it's a still small tench. But, you know, they're a slow grower. It'll take a while. They get pushed out by the carp on the commercials, unfortunately. But it is nice just to come tench fishing and catch tench. Well, I haven't caught it yet, have I? Come on. There he comes. He's in. It'll be a better one. This one's a male tench. You can tell by the scoops. Last time I came was around a full moon time and I noticed I do get, in fact I wrote to Dick Walker about that. I seemed to catch a lot of male tench over the full moon. And he did write back and said he'd never really noticed it. But there you go. He used to write backwards and forwards with Dick. He must have got bored, brainless with me. Young 14 year old, keep writing to him every three weeks. But give Dick his due, he answered all the time. I'm on again, I'm using this match rod because it's got what they call a fast tip so you can set the hook pretty quickly he is chugging along well i feel another tench wow doing okay with the tench this morning guys it's only like a like two or three hour session but the saying is be there when they bite i can slide him straight onto the mat there we go and that again looks like yeah, it could be a male tench. I think it's to do with that full moon. I have noticed it before. But there you go. That coupled to this setting. I shall have the waggler up. Change hook size. Put a piece of crust on. And sent it out before that sun got in the shadow line. I don't know if I'm going to get it. The bend will tell you. It ain't a tench. I just paused when the crust disappeared and watched the waggler float and it, I'll tell you if it does 
work. It's a deadly method. I've no idea. I know it's a carp. It's a big piece of crust. It's coming in now. Let's just see it. Let's just see it, boys. Oh, yeah. That would be a nice finish to a morning session if I get it in. Just adapted, shallowed right up from the tench depth on the bottom. Come on, babe, don't fall off yet. Don't fall off for Uncle Graham. That's rud, tench, perch. And if I get this, a decent carp, all on even rods, match rods. Wow. <laughs> He ain't happy, that's for, for certain. I've woken him up early morning. It's an early morning call. They do scrap. They do pull the string, these guys. I don't do many early morning sessions getting up at 3.30 and 4, sleeping in the car, but it's worth it, isn't it? If you just get those three hours, sort of four till seven, that's the sort of time. Oh, come on, babe. No, 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 no. Crikey, this rod's going to go in a minute. What's he trying to net himself in a minute? Do you believe the size of this fish? It's just, <laughs> if it makes three pounds, I'll be lucky. Look at it. I can't do anything with it. Like a wild carp. Not many wild carp around anymore. Look at that match where it's not supposed to do this. Four pounds I'll give him, maximum. I think I'm going to have to switch a camera off. I have no battery when I go to the other place. What a fish. Unbelievable scrap. Now I should roll him. Now I've got him. Oh, maybe he's five. Oh, okay. Maybe he's bigger. Yeah, he's bigger. Sorry. My apologies, ladies. He's a fat fatty. He's a fatty. I don't think he could go five. But in that setting, I take him. Hell of a paddle on it. Well, that was worth a throw, wasn't it? Last minute, I just thought I could fish here for about 20 minutes before that sun comes across here for the tension. I have, in fact, got one back under here with worm. I thought it's got to be worth one last throw because this, the few times I have fished here, I've noticed you get the sun on the water, it tends to shut down on surface activity. So, another piece of crust in a minute. Well, the light's just hitting the uh, lilies over there on the far bank, so my clock's ticking here for tench. Once that sun comes over this way, it probably will knock it on the head. But I've had a good little session, and it's not done yet. I see some ripples out there, so I might just Heave a piece of crust out there for 10 minutes. Because again, if the sun comes up, I think being a natural water, this one, it's going to knock it on the head. Now, if you look as the sun's come up on that uh, bed of lilies, they're absolutely opening up, and that is it in what? Let's say an hour of actually that sunlight hitting them. It's seven o'clock in the morning, so it's still cold, it's not a temperature thing. And they would all open up and go through the day and then close up at night. Well, it's gone quiet now. <clears throat> the sun's three quarters of the way across the lake. I'm getting nothing here. But it's not just the sun, <clears throat> I feel, is to do with that full moon. I've been doing this a long time. And I've never done a great deal over that full moon period, even though the full moon is gone now. I've lost a float. Um, 
trying to catch those carp out of there. They've all shut down. No more perch, nothing's dead, so just gone seven o'clock. I'm gonna truck off to this other fishery and um, on the way back, <clears throat> see what I can catch there. So, looks like it's all over by the shouting, but it's well worth getting up early in the morning for. It's always nice to be at you know, up at dawn and uh, it's all crisp and fresh, a little bit cold. But listen, it can be a long winter, can't it? Let's get out in the summer, get the best you can. Thanks for watching us. I'll uh, gonna pop home, I think, and uh, see if I can get a few other jobs for you. You might wanna hang on now and see what else I'm up to. I just don't stop. See you next time. Okay, now here is the ultimate fisherman's hack for, well, basically getting some comfort in addition to your sleeping arrangements in the back of an estate car. This comes from uh, Mike, who had an awning that he had clamped on the side of his Land Rover Defender, and it wasn't being used. It comes with a pole that extends all the way down, and to keep it rigid from the car outwards, you've got Velcro tabs that go around a pole, as you can see there, extends out, a bit like a landing net, if you can imagine. So you'd extend this pole out, pushing out the sheet, the tarpaulin type sheet, and then you can get the out legs holding it up. And you think, oh, it's a nice, strong fabric. So, you know, commercially made one, and it should normally clamp to a roof rack, but I don't have a roof rack on my car, do I? So how on earth have I put this thing together? It folds all up into this uh, zipped up channel. Well, what I did was make two pieces of angle iron vertical. They're hammered in the ground, only about, I don't know, about a foot, about 12 inches. But I don't want them scratching my car, do I? And I've seen one on YouTube where his car uh, was absolutely gouged by putting uh, one of these racks on that didn't fit right or didn't go on properly. So I put pipe insulation, I think it's a 22 mil one, around so I don't scratch. I've also pre-drilled the holes out even larger. I've put the bolt on there. The black is the original bracket. As you can see, it's got a nut that can slide up and down a channel there. So you can move it all the way along the channel, obviously to suit your roof rack. But as I say, I have no roof rack. So how on earth am I doing this? Why is it all standing up? There, so you see how I bolted it together? It goes in this zipped up compartment there. So try and sort of get in your head that there should be a roof rack that is clamped to, but I put my own vertical poles in and they don't damage the car. I would normally be sleeping in the car, as you saw in that last tench film. If I'm overnighting, I've got my camper gear, I can sleep in there. Six feet bed goes in there. Brilliant. How have I managed to keep those other uprights upright? Well, normally they would come with these brackets. These are obviously for a double thickness roof rack, barred, double barred, uh, Land Rover Defender, and you can, I believe, buy different types of fittings for different types of roof racks. So I just use the equivalent fitting for that bracket without using it, I've got nothing to clamp to, so I made my own vertical supports. As you can see, drilled out, I could put a washer in there if I wanted, but it's absolutely rigid. It's hammered in, but I've got a support going across to the back. Right, now here's how the support works. I've got some old foot plate steels that Mike had. I cut them about inch wide, three inches long, bend them into the shape of the profile of the edge of the roof rack. There's a lip there where my thumb is, all the way along, which would normally take a roof rack. And those hooks, look, the shape of that, by putting in the vise and beating it around with a hammer, I have come up with that. I, I've got a, a, you know, a glass, I don't want to break it, have I? I've got a glass sunroof, so I've just used you, a hole, but you could, obviously that's going to tear through eventually. It might last 10 or 20 trips. I don't want to break the glass. You'd really be better off putting um, something like a split ring through that eye and then put the coil in. But look, you can slide up and down the tension. That's what I found. Now, this side, I just lashed it up tight, half hitches, with this uh, sort of nylon cooling line. It doesn't damage my sunroof. And that's, you know, having cracked sunroof before by putting stuff on, I want to be careful. They are extremely expensive. What you'd be better doing is like, where I join the lanyard to the fitting, I should use something like a split ring. 
preferably not a rusty one like you've got there, Graham. And that way the split ring would go through and that would stay permanently fixed on there. Now if you come around the other side of the car, let's go back up here, you can see something like a little cheap snap start, carbine snap there. Look, it goes through the hole, that would be perfect, absolutely perfect. You tie it to the right length and then you can just release it when you want to release it. It's not going to fall over anyway if that makes sense. Look, it goes through the hole and you can put it higher up should you want to avoid the lanyard or the rope going across your sunroof. This is my hack. This is my way of doing it. Now, those rigid poles, if it's windy, although they stand on the ground at the moment, the kit actually comes with its own uh, guy ropes there, which go down to support stakes. But what is this? This is something different. It also can come with this, a bundle of wires. It's got a cigarette lighter here, just there. So you know it's going to go into a 12 volt cigarette holder in your car or you can buy an adapter and it's got various buttons on the attachment there at the end of which is a i'm going to call it a jack plug but with i'm filming there's no way i can screw that and hold the camera at the same time down the middle here if you look where i'm going now there is another male jack plug you fit the male to the female and the threads hold it all together you then get your buttons, put it a cigarette lighter in the car, and lo and behold, you have light. Now, as you see there, it's like LEDs all the way down, lots of little ones. It's broad daylight. I thought it was a really good idea. You press it again, and you've got a different type of light. Maybe a sort of a harder, whiter light there. Press it again, and you've got the amber colour. As you can see, it's you know really well made, ideal for staying dry, and it gives you space under which look. If I've got my bed chair in the back of the car, which I do have, and all tackle and all cooking stuff and seats, it's a mess. This way, I can sit outside in a bit of comfort and watch it like at night when it's raining here. I came out at eleven o'clock at night, and you can see that light is really bright. You could take if you wanted a separate twelve volt battery with a couple of uh, crocodile clips linked to a female cigarette adapter and then use the male adapter into that so you don't drain any battery. Mike's used it, as you can see you can just change colours as you wish with that switch in there. Now what I think Mike told me, there's the hard white light, sort of ice, ice white, but this one, that amber one, is one that doesn't allegedly, I believe, attract the mosquitoes. So if it's night time in the summer in the UK, you might want to use the amber light. I think it's a really good setup. Look, there you can see it's actually raining and all the chairs and the coolers are outside. And being long and fitting into that channel, I can put it in my car, six feet long. It goes underneath my bed chair. Obviously, it might take you 15, 20 minutes just to hammer those stakes in and tie it all up. To me, that's going to be something I'll be using in the future. Think about it, think of the hack and think of some changes how you can adapt it.